Hey guys, welcome to today's physics video. This video is a tutorial on how to solve Cambridge IGCSE Physics Paper 4 Specimen Paper 4 examinations in 2020. Question 1. Figure 1.1 shows the speed time graph for a car traveling along a straight road. The graph shows how the speed of the car changes as the car passes through a small town. Part A. Calculate the distance between the start of the town and the end of the town. We are given a speed time graph here, and in order to find the distance from it, we need to find the area under the graph because distance equals to speed times time, and the x-axis represents time, and the y-axis represents speed. For this question, it's from the start to the end of the town, so it will be this area. The width from B to C is from 18 to 42, so that's 24. And for height, it's from 0 to 13. We then multiply 24 with 13 and we get 312 meters as the final answer. Part B. Calculate the acceleration of the car between T and D. We have a slope from C to D here, and we know that to find the acceleration from the speed time graph, we need to find the gradient of the graph. To find the gradient, identify the coordinates of C and D first. They are 42 and 13 for C, and 54 and 31 for D. Then we calculate the gradient by finding the difference in y-coordinates and x-coordinates, which are 18 and 12 in this case, and divide the difference in y with the difference in x. The answer is 1.5 meter per second square. Part C. State how the graph shows that the deceleration of the car has the same numerical value as its acceleration. Back to our graph. This part represents the deceleration, and this part represents the acceleration. The question said they have the same numerical value, and yes, it seems like it, because we can see that both of them have same gradient, which means there were equal speed changes in equal times. Question 2. Figure 2.1 shows a conveyor belt transporting a package to a raised platform. The belt is driven by a motor. The mass of the package is 36 kilograms. Calculate the increase in the gravitational potential energy of the package when it is raised through a vertical height of 2.4 meters. Alright, we need to find the GPE, so let's use the formula. GPE equals to MGH. The mass is given here, 36 kilograms. G is the acceleration of free fall, 10 meter per second square, and H, the height is 2.4 meters. So it's 36 times 10 times 2.4, giving 864 joules as the answer. Part B. The package is raised through the vertical height of 2.4 meters in 4.4 seconds. Calculate the power needed to raise the package. Okay, same amount of energy would have been used since it's raised to the same height as part A, and we know the time taken. While the formula of power is energy divided by time, so it's 864 joules divided by 4.4 seconds, and the answer is 196 watts. Part C. The electric power supplied to matter is much greater than the answer to Part B. Explain how the principle of conservation of energy applies to this system. Okay, the power supplied needs to be bigger than the calculated value because some energy will be dissipated into the surroundings as thermal energy due to friction. If we were to make connection with the conservation of energy, 
we need to include that the initial energy equals to the final energy, so energy is not lost, but some are converted to heat in the process. Part D. Assume that the power available to raise packages is constant. A package of mass greater than 36 kg is raised through the same height. Suggest and explain the effect of this increase in mass on the operation of the conveyor belt. The question is asking what will happen if the mass is increased when the power is constant. Well, since the mass is increased, the gravitational potential energy needed will be increased. Since energy equals to power divided by time, and power stays constant while energy is increased, time will be increased. The final effect will be time taken longer to transport the package. Question 3. The engine of an unpowered toy train is rolling at a constant speed on a level track as shown in figure 3.1. The engine collides with a stationary toy truck and joins with it. So this train will move in this way and collide with this truck which is not moving. Before the collision, the toy engine is traveling at 0.32 meter per second. The mass of the engine is 0.50 kilograms. Calculate the momentum of the toy engine before the collision. It's before the collision, so we just need to think about this engine. What is the formula of momentum? It's mass times velocity. Mass is 0.50 kilograms and the velocity is 0.32. So just multiply those two, you'll get 0.16 kilogram meter per second. Part B. The mass of the truck is 0.30 kilograms. Using the principle of conservation of momentum, Calculate the speed of the joint engine and truck immediately after the collision. Now, we need to think about the momentum and the speed of both the engine and the truck. Due to the conservation of momentum, the momentum before the collision and after the collision will be the same. The momentum of the engine before the collision was 0.16 and for the truck it's 0 because its velocity was 0. So the momentum after the collision will be 0.16 as well, and this should equal to the total mass multiplied by final speed. The total mass is the sum of the mass of the engine and the truck, which is 0.5 plus 0.3, 0.8. So to find the speed, divide 0.16 with 0.8, and you'll get 0.2 meter per second. Question 4. A solar panel is mounted on the roof of a house. Figure 4.1 shows a section through part of the solar panel. A pump makes water flow through the copper pipes. The water is heated by passing through the solar panel. These are the copper pipes painted black and water passes through these. Part A. Select and explain three features of the solar panel that maximize the final temperature of the water. We need to write the features that help increase the temperature of the water. Well, there are plenty here to write about. First one is that the pipe is made of copper, which is a good conductor of heat. So it will absorb a lot of heat from the sun. Also, it is painted black, which is a good absorber of heat. Then there is the insulating material, which prevents heat loss, and the glass of air will reduce the warm air being blown away and make use of it. Part B. During one day, 250 kilograms of water is pumped through the solar panel. The temperature of this water rises from 16 degrees Celsius to 38 degrees Celsius. The water absorbs 25% of this energy incident on the solar panel. The specific heat capacity of water is 4,200 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. Calculate the energy incident on the solar panel during the day. To find the energy, 
the formula would be energy equals to mass times specific heat capacity times temperature change. Mass is here, specific heat capacity is 4200, and the temperature change is 38 minus 16, so it's 22. We get 2.31 times 10 to the power of 7. This is not the final answer because it said the water absorbs 25% of the energy, so the energy we just calculated is only 25% of the total energy. Therefore, to calculate the initial energy incident on the solar panel, we'll need to divide it by 25% and get 9.24 times 10 to the power of 7. Part C. The solar panel in figure 4.1 is designed to heat water. A person is deciding whether to install solar panels on her house. Liz then explained three pieces of information she needs to consider in order to make her decision. So before she installs the solar panels, she'll need to first consider which direction the roof faces in order to get the most amount of sunlight. It should be facing the sun to absorb as much heat as possible. Then she'll also need to think about how much energy she'll need to make hot water. How many people are using them? How often is it going to be used? This is to estimate the required energy output. Also, she needs to consider the cost of installation, whether it is more cost effective than using the electric heater. This should be viewed in both short term and long term perspectives. Part D. The sun releases energy as a result of nuclear fusion. State the meaning of nuclear fusion. So this is just a definition. It's when nuclei join together, accept hydrogen for nuclei to produce a different element, and energy is produced during its process. Question 5. Figure 5.1 shows a gas contained in a cylinder enclosed by a piston. At first, the length of cylinder containing the gas is 100 cm. The pressure of the gas, shown by the pressure gauge, is 300 kPa. The area of cross-section of the cylinder is 0.12 m2. Part A. Describe the motion of the molecules of the gas. How do the gas particles move? They move in random directions, they have high speeds, and will collide with each other and with walls. Next, use the idea of momentum to explain how the molecules exert the force on the walls of the cylinder. Well, as the molecules move, they collide with walls of the cylinder, and this will cause the change in momentum of molecules. Why is that so? It's because momentum equals to mass times velocity, and velocity is changed after the collision, resulting in change in momentum of molecules. But force is the rate of change of momentum, and is needed to change the momentum, thus exerting a force on the walls. Part B. The piston is moved so that the new length of cylinder occupied by the gas is 40 cm. The temperature of the gas is unchanged. Calculate the new pressure of the gas. Originally, the length was 100 cm and now it's 40 cm. The initial pressure and the area of cross-section are given in the question. So we need to use the formula P1V1 equals to P2V2 meaning as long as the temperature is constant, the product of pressure and volume will remain constant. So it's 300 times 100 times 0.12 equals to P2, the unknown, times 0.40 times 0.12. We want to find P2, so the calculation goes like this. And the answer is 750 kilopascal. Next, explain in terms of the behavior of the molecules why the pressure has changed. 
This question is asking how the movement of molecules has changed the pressure. Well, as the volume decreased, the molecules started to collide with walls more often. As a result, there was greater force exerted per unit area, increasing the pressure. That is all for this video. I'll cover the next half in my next video. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye.